this is take two, video two of grooming. I'm going to start with the head. I know you have already seen some head grooming, but we wanted to get some different camera angles. Nola was bathed yesterday, um, so she's clean, she's dry, just doing kind of a, she's already been combed out once, so I know the tangles are out, but to do any fine tuning and grooming, um, I'm going to comb so I can see what I'm working with. Again, comb eyebrows back over the head, beard down. This is the cheek hair, obviously ear. Okay, so she's pretty combed out and smooth. There's several tools you can use. This is the one I like to use, the Artero stripping uh, knife for eyebrows. So her eyebrows have combed back over her head. I use this just like a comb, and again, no flip in the wrist, just a straight pull back. Just comb using the head for some leverage, and that will thin out some of the longer eyebrows. Just a little bit. And then you can comb that back. Look what you've got. And if there are still some long wispies, you can just finger pluck. Just pull those out. That way, you're still going to have a nice eyebrow, but you'll be able to see their eyes. They get a little better field of vision. And then I know we also talked about the hair in between, or here, in the corner of the eye. My recommendation is to not trim it. It'll continue to grow and smooth. So hers is not fully flat, but you can see that this hair here, instead of trimming it, which if you trim and then as it grows, it will poke into the eye. If you leave it and it grows, you can just train it, comb it straight with the beard, and you shouldn't have any issues. Good girl. Good girl. Uh, Nola is my model for a couple of reasons. One, she's got a coat that will be very similar to most of your puppies. She's got a lot of coat. She still has some puppy coat that needs to come out. So you'll be able to see that transition. And um, I also thought it would be helpful because she's not super cooperative. <laughs> so you can see that it's really not easy. And so if you get frustrated with your own puppy, um, it's normal. They're wiggly. They don't enjoy this. Um, but give them some time and they'll get used to it. Okay, so ears, again, comb, and she still, so she has some fuzzy hair on here, which is dead hair. You can, again, pluck, and I have found, I know that I have said you can't ruin the coat, and you can't, but you can over pluck the ears, and I have at times been a little too enthusiastic and created a little bit of a bald spot in the ear. So just be mindful of that. You don't want to take out too much in one spot. Um, but you can pull the hair just like anywhere else on the rest of the body. And one way you can tell if the hair needs to be pulled is do a little bit of a back comb on the ear, really anywhere. And if you see longer hair sticking out, you want to pull the direction the hair is growing. So I see some longer hairs. Just pull those scragglers. So that's a way to strip out some of the dead hair on the ear itself. Good girl. We'll go ahead and demonstrate the uh, trimming of the ears again. Comb the hair just so you can see the line, and then with your fingers, feel where the end of the skin is. So at the end of her skin is right where my fingernails out. So all of that 
is extra hair. That's all long hair, hasn't been trimmed too short, and I won't trim it all the way to the skin, just there's no reason to right now. Um, so it, it leaves you a lot of room for error. And I'll start with my thinning shears. Now I can see that I'm not too close to her skin. But another thing that you can do and I would recommend, you may need help just having somebody steady the, the puppy's head, um, is putting your finger where the end of the skin is so you're not going to clip it too short. And just go slow. Thinning shears make it very forgivable. You're not committing to a hard line. what will help is when you've trimmed that and then you can it's thinner then you can go back in with your straight shears and see where you need to, to clip it off these are blunt nose straight scissors and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut here closer to there's the way the ear is angled is it's connected here, comes out, and then angles and goes up. So I'm going to just go ahead and trim that. And by trimming that, it helps so that when the ear flops down, there is more airflow to help keep it dry. Done some trimming. I worked on that angle right there. Up, put my finger where the skin is. I um, recommend you don't need to spend a ton of money on your scissors but I also don't recommend getting the cheapest ones. Um, I like, what are these? Onyx, um, good hand feel. They're not, I've got some that have bigger gaps in the teeth and that takes out bigger chunks at one time. I like it a little bit finer, uh, it just, Again, you have a little bit more control. You're not taking out as much. You're not getting a hard, you're not committing to a hard line. So as I'm getting up to where the ear bends, just following. I'm always going from the bottom up until you get up to the curve. Follow the curve up a little bit, and then I'll show you how to come from the top down. And I know I mentioned this on the last video, um, but if this is the only one you're watching, I recommend that you, especially when you're starting at the bottom, that you're going from the inside of the ear with your, with your uh, scissors angled in so that you will have a slight uh, like undercut and you want that undercut or like a little beveled edge to be on the inside of the ear, not on the outside of the ear. So I've used my thinning shears, looks pretty even, and at this point you could stop. You wouldn't have to take out a straight scissor uh, unless you just want to have a really, really clean edge, but you could just stop with the thinning shears. I usually will go ahead and get out, this is when I commit to my sharper scissors. And these do not have a blunt edge, so be careful with these if you're going to commit to these. And again, you're going to just, here's that angle. If you see some longer ones, just kind of trim them.
smooth it. Okay. See if you've got anything sticking out. Yep, there's something right there. You can just clip it. And I'll also check it from the top of the ear. So you can see it's following her skin. You don't have a beveled edge on the outside, and I've done a pretty good job that you don't have one on the inside either. Um, so I still have left some hair length. Her skin is about there. So, I mean, I could take it shorter. It's personal preference. Um, again, I like to leave it longer just because it's going to leave you some <laughs> wiggle room for if you make an error. Or if you, you just, you can continue to trim. You obviously can't put hair back on. And you don't want to cut them. And not everybody trims their ears. Some people like to leave it long and it gets curly and wispy. Um, since these guys show and it's I, I enjoy trimming them, um, I like to keep their ears a little bit neater. So, the top of the ear, this is where it's a little bit trickier. Because you've got this hair that you can see right here. It's like, what do I do with that? You cut it. Um, but when you're doing the, this, this is a little bit harder. Uh, this hair, you're going to want to go from the top down. So here we went from the bottom up. Now we're going to go the top down. And what I like to do, okay, so from here, you can see that that doesn't look like it's attached to the ear. So I am going to go ahead and trim that off. And then I just kind of go slow. So I feel where the end of her skin is, push the hair forward and down, and then use these thinning shears to trim it. And obviously from here, I'm doing it from the top of the ear, or the outside rather than the inside, mainly because it's a little bit easier for me to see right now, um, but I will, once I take out kind of this bulk, I'll go from the inside and trim. Again, so just push the hair. Feel where the skin is. Trim. Following that skin as the guide for the shape of the ear. Okay, so I've taken out some of that bulk, and again, just as you're trimming, push, push the hair down. Use your finger as to where the skin is, and then use that her skin as your guide for the shape of the ear and just follow that with these thinning shears and you're getting down here to the end where obviously it's round and so just follow that okay, now this is where I definitely want to go back and start trimming from the underneath part of the ear. Push the hair down. Okay, so if I look From the inside, I'm going to just trim. Again, now I'm keeping the curve of the scissors pointing directed towards inside the towards the inside of the ear where you can't see. Ouch.
longer. I've left myself some length. If I screw up, it's okay, I can fix it. I don't let anybody else groom my dogs. Um, obviously, you can have a professional do this. Uh, you just want to give them pictures uh, of what you want. Tell them the only places you know you would want them to use scissors are to trim their ears, tails, um, feet. And I wouldn't let a groomer do anything more than that, only because uh, more times than not, they end up making them look like a labradoodle. So if you just tell them the only place they are allowed to trim a dog is around their ears, do not touch the eyebrows, do not touch the beard, uh, you, should, you should be pretty safe. A groomer should be able to not mess that up. So, I have trimmed the hair right here. I could even trim probably a little bit more. Again, using thinning shears. And you could just, sorry, sweetie. Just trim that out. And again, you're gonna provide more airflow. It makes it so you're gonna be less prone to ear infections. Their hair, or I'm sorry, their ear will lay flat, or not flat, but it'll lay correctly because it won't have bulk from hair in the way. Um, but that's really the main reason why we trim it is just to help keep the ears dry. So, taking some out there, followed the skin for the shape of the ear, pulled off some of the longer hair off the top or if it was dead. And that's essentially it. I mean, I'll probably go in there and um, clean up a little bit more just because I'm a little fastidious about it. But I think just for a demonstration, you can see that's how you trim the ear. Um, we've done the eyebrows. I did, when I combed her back on her head, you don't want, you don't necessarily need this longer hair back here on the top, off, off the back skull. And that is something that you can use your stripping blade. And again, just pull straight back. And, and feel like it's a, almost like a comb. Um, so you're not, you're not uh, flipping your wrist, you're not breaking, you're just pulling. But you can, sorry sweetie, pull this hair off the back skull and smooth out the head. So that's pretty much the head. Um, I demonstrated last time, I'll show again. So this is your cheek hair. Here you can use scissors. Um, she doesn't need to. You can use your stripping uh, knife and just pull straight down. Thin that out. And that's it. You can see her eyes. You can see her ear. That's thinned out. Don't do anything to the beard unless it's just super thick. Then again, I would use your stripping knife. You can use your eight blade, but not a lot, and just pull straight through. Maybe a couple times, pull out a little bit, and that, that would be all I would do with the beard. Okay, so neck. You wanna find where the beard starts, which is about here. So this, I'm not gonna groom neck I will groom. And with that, I'm going to start with, you can call this a Mars, I personally like the Greyhound brand, but it's a Coatmaster or a stripping rake. And you just again, uh, it's a straight pull. And Nola, what's I think helpful in this to demonstrate is she still has puppy coat that's coming out. So she's got some lighter, softer coat in there and then her adult coat's coming in. So this is what I've just pulled out, it's just puppy coat, you'll have that. That's what mats so easily, um, because if you don't strip that out, 
it makes it so that adult coat can't come in or the two are getting tangled in creating mats. So I'm just going to pull that out using this, using the rake. Uh, if I wanted to sculpt it a little bit more, I would use the stripping knife. This doesn't hurt her, she's just getting wiggly. Thin out the neck. That's about all I'm going to do in the front for now. And then since I'm in the neck, I'll go to the chest. And again, this is probably my biggest complaint with Nola's coat right now is her chest is still very soft, very, very much puppy coat. Um, I've taken it down pretty short at times and I can see now where her adult coat is coming in. So I, since I was showing her, I didn't want to take it all the way down. And I don't know if you can see, but I mean, that's just downy, downy soft. So that is all puppy coat. This is what mats. This is what needs to come out. Okay, so that is obviously oops, the underneath part, the top of her neck. Now this is going to be a little bit in the way. So I'm going to pull the ear up. Now I'm going to hold her skin a little bit taut. So the neck is obviously behind her ear, all of this area here below the beard. She can get a little bulky through here and I want to clean that up because I want, I want to show that she has a nice elegant neck. I want to see where her neck comes into her shoulder. So I'm going to use my eight blade and then just pull straight back. Again, no bend in my wrist. And you want to run this in the direction that the hair grows. So again, I'm pulling out most of that is just soft puppy undercoat. And the more times I do this with this puppy coat, the more opportunity her adult coat has to come in. Again, soft. You're fine. Okay, we're going to go ahead and stop here for now. Um, so you can see the transition of neck, ear, head. We'll move on to the rest of the body grooming at another time. Um, and we'll just continue later.